Hi everyone, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the garden. I am so happy to be here with you again. It has been a long time even for me. I think it's been about six weeks since I put out my last video. Today I'm going to share with you a full garden tour and I am so excited. This is my favorite time of year in the garden. Everything is lush and beautiful and we're not quite at the point where the harvest has really started to kick in so it's not quite as much work. We're also at the time of year where most of the weeding has been done. All of the plants have gotten large and are choking out the weeds so I'm not having to weed as much either. I just get to enjoy it for a few weeks before the really serious harvest starts happening. Here we are in my forest garden and I thought today we'll just take a quick walk through the forest garden but we'll focus mostly on the vegetable gardens and the high tunnel in today's video. So besides me here I have this gorgeous mint and if anyone can tell me what kind of mint this is that would be awesome. I was given it by a neighbor and one of the things I love about this mint is that it is not invasive. One of the things about mint to be aware of if you are going to plant it in your garden is it can be super invasive and I'll show you an example of that in my other garden. But this one is just a bush and it has these beautiful flowers on it that the bees as you can see all the bumblebees here absolutely love and in behind it I have this gorgeous elderberry. This is a Bob Gordon cultivar and I just planted this one last year and it is already almost I think I'm just about 5'9 so it's around the 5'9 mark which is crazy and it has flowers on it this year. If I can get some elderberries this year I would be so excited. This is one of my favorite perennial herbs. This is bee balm or wild oregano. It smells a lot like oregano and it forms these beautiful purple flowers that the bees absolutely love and it smells really good and it just looks beautiful even with just the green like this. All right, and over here beside the bee balm, we have some pink yarrow, white yarrow in behind, a peony, and sadly, we had a crazy heat wave about a week ago. We had temperatures up into the high 40s. I think it was 45 degrees Celsius at one point and the peonies like cooler weather, so they bloomed and basically faded out right away, so I only got to enjoy them for a few days. In behind I have some comfrey there and one of the things I always forget to do is to lop my comfrey down. The whole point of comfrey is to be able to use it as a mulch and I always forget to do that but the bees love it so that's okay. The raspberries that I planted last year have just gone absolutely crazy. As you can see all this growth is the new growth and we are just about to be able to eat. Oh I think I can actually eat this one. Might be a little bit underripe. Maybe a lot underripe, but that's okay. I love raspberries so much. The vegetable garden has done absolutely amazing with all of this heat. I'm probably a full two to three weeks ahead for most things. And even the crops that prefer the cool weather, like the kale and the broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, and all of those have done really well. One of the things that I did have to do when the temperatures were super, super hot is keep a sprinkler running during the hottest part of the day. And that did actually seem to help with um, the plants not bolting, which is pretty awesome. Behind me here, this gorgeous plant, this is scarlet kale and I'll put a list to all the places that I get my seeds down in the description box below if you would like to check that out. This kale is absolutely delicious and so beautiful. It'll be one that I grow year after year for sure. This gorgeous kale here is the one that I talk about every single year and sadly you can't get seeds for it anymore. This is abundance kale. Um, you can get one that's similar called premier kale and I'll link a couple places you can get it down in the description box below but this is definitely one of my favorites and it will get over five feet tall by the end of the season and not be bitter and still be just as tender as it is right now. I didn't plant a ton of beets this year just this one row that you can see here and that's because we have found that when I grow a ton of them they usually just sit into in the um, root cellar and then go to the pigs in the spring because only my husband and I really like them. So I just planted enough just for us. And then in behind that I have this gorgeous red acre cabbage here. This is a late season cabbage and won't be ready to harvest until probably around the end of August, the beginning of September. And it's a really good storage one. And one of the perks of purple cabbage is that cabbage moths don't really like it. I usually don't end up with a lot of damage on them. So that's just something to keep in mind if you do have an area or if you live in an area where cabbage moths are a problem. And then in behind us here, come on down this way. As you can see, the broccoli is doing absolutely fabulous. Isn't that a gorgeous head of broccoli? I do have a broccoli tutorial video that I'll link for you up here if you want to get some tips and tricks on how to grow broccoli. I did, I normally do around 100 and I did 200 this year. And I think I have only had about four or five of them actually bolt in this heat, which is absolutely amazing. So super excited about this. 
These little cabbages here, these are Copenhagen market cabbage, and these are the ones that I grow for early to mid-season cabbages. They're really, really great for making coleslaw. As you can see here, I have some lettuces that are planted in amongst the cabbage, and I did that because the cabbage can help to shade out the lettuce. Lettuce is really prone to bolting in the heat, but this is working really well. Most of the lettuces that I buy are from Johnny's, and they're Salanova um, lettuces, which are less prone to bolting than any other lettuce I've ever grown. So they are a little bit pricey, but I find them to be well worth it. My carrots are starting to do really well. I do have to get in here and do a little bit of weeding and a little bit of thinning. And I have nasturtiums planted all the way along this side and I love the orange. And then I planted these gorgeous tall sunflowers along this side of the aisle. And it's just gonna look so beautiful when they're six feet tall with big giant flowers on them. Just love it. My garlic is just about ready to harvest. My husband is being attacked by horse flies behind the camera. So if the camera just all of a sudden goes flying, that's why. <laughs> but usually you harvest garlic when the bottom three leaves have died back. So we're just about at the point of harvesting. And I did check and my garlic is not huge. This is the first time I've ever grown garlic um, kind of on this scale before. And I think what I did was just neglected it early on in the season and didn't compost it well enough, give it enough food. Um, to form some really big bulbs or maybe it was the drought or whatever but either way I'm still really happy with it. The soil over on this side of the garden isn't quite as good as the soil down in the new part of the garden. This is the old garden that's been here for years and years and years and years and um, in the fall I'm going to just cover it with compost so that it can be a little bit better next year but it's still growing okay. I have all of my onions in here back in behind in the landscape fabric amongst all the weeds. I have a whole bunch of green beans more um, broccoli here and this broccoli is as you can see quite a bit smaller in size the plants themselves than the broccoli from over there that's just poorer soil and then i have my over here i have turnips and some more beans over there so now we're going to head down to the high tunnel i'm so excited to show you everything that's in there i mean i'm excited to show you everything i just love gardening as you know but the high tunnel is um, particularly awesome <laughs> last year i didn't get tomatoes and I, I think it was the second week of july or something like that and i was able to eat tomatoes out of here over two weeks ago so just towards i think it was the 18th or 17th of june which is unbelievable and i've actually been harvesting enough to start freezing to can um, when i start canning in probably the beginning of august or so so come let me show you what we have in here i just noticed this little guy is falling down here i'm not pruning a lot off of my cherry tomatoes i have been doing some research on this and a lot of people say that it's just with cherry tomatoes you don't really need to prune them a ton so i'm just kind of keeping them contained but not overly pruned as you can see down here we have some tomatoes these ones are my manitoba bush tomatoes in here and this whole entire row here we've been harvesting tons and tons of tomatoes off of all the way down already these are always the earliest tomatoes that we get here and the same thing i don't know if you remember last year i was showing you this kind of marbling or veining i guess you would call it on the leaves here and the same thing is happening this year but it really doesn't seem to impact the tomato growth ripening or anything like that so i'm just not going to worry about it i did use tomato fertilizer i'm going to be fertilizing them again probably next week and beyond that i it, unless it's going to start affecting the tomato production i'm not going to worry about it over here oh dear this one is also falling they're just growing so vigorously in this heat I need to grab another string one second this beautiful vine here look at these gorgeous flowers this one is called a kukuzi squash and it's an italian squash super 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 long it's going to grow and it's going to grow all the way up i'm going to grow it across the prayer flags here so that the big long squash can hang down and it's a mix between a zucchini and a cucumber apparently i've never had one before i wanted to show you something that one of my instagram followers found when i was filming here let's see if i can find them let's see let's see oh here we go i don't know if you can see this in here can you see these little tiny eggs that are hanging off that? Can you see those? Yep. These are lace wing eggs and lace wings are an awesome predatory bug 
I'll put a picture of what one of them looks like mature on the screen here. But what's so awesome about this is I have been battling aphids with in my peppers and these will eat the pepper, not the peppers, they'll eat the aphids. And the other thing that's moved in here are cat or are um, ladybugs rather. So it's pretty neat when you can see an ecosystem start to form because of your influence a little bit and then the natural predators will come in and help you kind of keep everything in balance and that's it's awesome one of the things that's really great about growing up here it is a super short season but we don't have a ton of bug pressure which i really appreciate this is a black beauty zucchini and i just peeked in here and saw that there is one that is ready to harvest isn't that beautiful i also have some goldie zucchini in here and to be honest I probably won't plant zucchini in here again and take up the real estate in the high tunnel because my zucchini that's out in the garden is is um, producing fruit at pretty much the same rate the only real difference is the amount of green that these plants have in comparison to the ones outside so I'll just grow my zucchini outside from now on oh come look at these And I'm gonna have to get this one staked up as well, but these ones are called Crushed Heart. Isn't that the most beautiful tomato? And it's just starting to get a blush on it. These are pink Berkeley tie-dye tomatoes, and I've actually already eaten one of these. I have had one that was ripe enough. Oh my goodness, this one's ripe enough. Let's pick it. Without breaking off all the other ones. Isn't that? the most beautiful tomato you have ever seen. And the flavor of these is, I can't even explain it, it's so delicious. Oh my goodness. It's sweet with a little, a little bit of acidic kind of kick to it, which I like, I like an acidic tomato. It's so good, oh my goodness, really, really delicious. Okay, I'll share. Mm. I wish I had planted 10 of these. I honestly do. I'll plant way more of them next year. Look at the amount of cherry tomatoes that are on one clump of these. This is um, Berry's Crazy Cherry. That's what this one is called. There's, I hope they taste good. I haven't tried any Wild Boar Farms tomatoes before, but so far they're growing really, really well. And are quite delicious, the ones I've been able to taste so far. These are peanuts and they're finally starting to do something, which is great. They just, I started them from seed back in I think the beginning of March and they have been flowering and they have been sending off their little shoots to go into the ground. So hopefully we'll get some peanuts. Even if I only got a couple peanuts, I would be happy with that. These guys here, these beautiful ones, these are hot wax peppers. And then these ones are banana peppers, sweet banana peppers. Look at how bizarre this one looks and this one too. I wonder what is going on with that. These ones are my favorite ones for canning, for making pickled um, peppers with because they're not super hot and I don't really like a really, really hot pepper. And then a couple more things to show you before we head out of the high tunnel. I've never grown eggplant before, but look at how well they're doing. They're so beautiful, so I'm really excited about that. And with the heat, they've gone absolutely crazy, as you can see. The sweet potatoes down here have totally started to go crazy with the heat. So again, this is one of those things that even if I could only get a couple of sweet potatoes, I would be happy with that. And lastly, we have the peppers. And the peppers are kind of, they've kind of been a little, I don't know, off this year some of them look really big and beautiful like these and then right beside they're really small unlike last year where I all of my peppers were looking like this but conversely we actually are harvesting off of these and we didn't harvest our peppers until I want to say middle of August but if you look down here you can see that there's tons of just about ready peppers so I'm not really sure what's going on, but I wanted to show you two different peppers down here that are just so beautiful and two that I haven't grown before. This is called a candy cane pepper. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? So it will turn red, but it'll keep these light stripes in it, hence the name. But these are supposed to be delicious. And then these guys here, 
These are called black beauty peppers and they're actually just about black. And we harvested one the other day and it was quite good. Did you like it? Yeah, it was tasted. Yeah, it was pretty good, hey? It just tastes mostly like a green pepper. Yeah, it does, yeah. And when you cut them open, the inside of it just looks just like a green pepper and it is green. It's just the, out, the very outside of it that's black. But they're kind of a nice novelty one and the plants are doing really well. I think what we'll do now is we'll head up and I'll show you my squash patch, my pickling cucumbers, and I think I have some potatoes planted up there too. So let's go check that out. You guys all know how much I love me some squash. I love cucumbers. I love making pickles. I love storing up squash for the winter. And last year was a little bit of a disappointment because it was so cold in the spring and the whole season basically was cold and rainy and the squash just didn't do well. This year is pretty much the exact opposite of that. The squash are doing just amazing. These little squash, if you look down in here, it's a spaghetti squash and look at how many squash are on this plant. You can see them all, all over the place here. And I have, I think probably six or seven plants that are equally as laden with spaghetti squash, tons of other kinds of squash. I think I planted about six or seven different squash this year, different varieties of squash, and they're all doing really well. But one of the things I'm really excited about is I came up to check the pickling cucumbers. My pickling cucumbers are going absolutely crazy. Look at this. I found these this morning. I just saved picking them until this evening when I could pick them with you but I have just tons of them. I'm gonna be able to make my first batch of pickles tomorrow, which is I think three to four weeks earlier than usual. And normally what I do is I plant in this landscape fabric and then I cover them with plastic and I leave them covered most of the summer, unless it's really, really hot, in order to get pickling cucumbers up here. But this year I was able to do it. We took the plastic off probably the second week after they were planted and have just left them like this and they're doing absolutely amazing. So I'm gonna have to pick all of these before we head back in the house, don't let me forget. Let me show you some more squash over here. As you can see, it's pretty much a squash jungle and I have never ever had squash like that. This I've always envied people down in the south who have these gorgeous squash patches that just look like a jungle. And now I have one. This may be the only summer I ever get one, but I am sure as heck going to enjoy it. I um, do have one bit of a tragedy, a tragedy that's happened here and this was my own poor planning. Normally what I do is I let my chickens free range until the squash are just about to start forming squash and then I lock them up for the rest of the season and let them out again after harvest. But as you can see, I forgot to do that. <laughs> so I have several squash that are completely destroyed by the chickens. Fortunately, it was mostly the spaghetti squash that this happened to, and I have so much spaghetti squash that I could afford to lose a few. But even still, I was a little bit bummed when I saw that. So I think that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I promise it will not be as long between this video and the next one as it was between the last one and this one. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.